Ich möchte aber gehen. Ach komm mal. Hello, I messed up again. Can you share this link to the groups, man? I messed up again. Idiot. Hi, Agatha. How's it going? Oh, God. All right, Mark. How you doing? Yeah, I had to uh, press the wrong button again. So frustrating, man. You just press one... You just make one tiny little movement of your hand and it starts it in portrait and you can't change it to landscape. It's so annoying. Sorry for moaning everyone, but it's the second time in about two weeks that I pressed the wrong button to start the tour. <laughs> the joys of doing a tour outside in the pouring rain. Hi, Suzanne, Dawn, Artie, everyone, Mark, how's life, everybody? Apologies for messing up the wrong link. Again, for the second time. <laughs> so annoying. So welcome to Gala Shields. It's horrible weather. I'll not be doing this tour for very long, by the way, unless the weather changes. It's, the weather's horrendous. So I'm in a little border town called the Gala Shields today. Just for the people who are watching at a later time, if you're not watching this tour live, this is a live stream tour, so I will be interacting with people in the chat, just in case you are wondering what I am doing. Because if you are watching this at a later date, not live, you cannot see the chat. So just to make it clear to anyone watching this tour at a later date on YouTube, this is a live stream tour. And I will be interacting with people if anyone turns up. <laughs> I've got eight people so far. <laughs> oh, God. I am an idiot of the highest order. Horrible day today. The rain was supposed to stop this morning, actually. As you can see, it's, I've got my umbrella on. See here? Got a wee pointy bit. Look, quite handy. So here we are. <laughs> well, in fact, I've got two pointy bits now I can use. <laughs> I remember I was doing this tour once in Edinburgh, right, on Hago. And this little thing here kept on getting in the way, right? And somebody asked me to move my umbrella. <laughs> This is me a chance. I'm walking in gale force winds, torrential rain, and all you're caring about is a wee thing up here. <laughs> it's a handy little pointer, you see. Over here, we have a lovely modern sculpture. I think it must be a water dispenser, but it doesn't appear to be working. <laughs> hey, Kathy! How far? We're about 36, 7 miles, 37 miles or so from Edinburgh. Takes about 55 minutes to one hour on the train, and a little bit longer to drive as well. There's not much here actually. Population is about 13,000 people only. There's not much here at all. There's only a few streets. Um, this is the Market Square. Okay. This is the Market Square here. Not much to see. This is just, uh, this is one of the main streets here. As you can see, it's got a, a retail park. It's got the great tapestry of Scotland is here. Who I asked once to do a virtual tour during Hegel, when Hegel was on actually. I contacted the Great Tapestry of Scotland to ask them if I could come and do a live tour there and they said no, they didn't want a live tour. Ah yeah Barbie, I pressed the wrong button again. I started the tour in portrait instead of landscape, I just accidentally clicked the button. The buttons that you've got to choose to start and do things are right next to each other. And it's quite cold and wet here and I just put my glove on because it's um, my, my gimbal glove. And I accidentally pressed the wrong button, it started it in portrait and it doesn't let you change it. So I had to um, um, st stop the link and create a new one. So it's quite annoying that. I'm going to have to find out if there's a way um, that you can keep the live session. Because it doesn't let you log out and log back in. 
So apologies everybody, that was my fault, I made a boo-boo. So look at this, because the, sun, this, cause the weather was supposed to change about 11 o'clock here. But it's saying on the weather app now, it's going to rain for all. But, but the like, sun's coming through, look, you can see the, the sun's trying to break through up there. But it's still um, quite wet just now. Thanks Diane for sharing all the... So this is the famous market square. That is not very square, and there's no market here. <laughs> this is just one of the the shopping streets here. There's only about two streets, three streets, and con connecting. Um, so this is one of the streets. This is the train station is just up to the right, and the bus station is over a bit to the to the right as well behind me. So it's got good train links. The train line actually opened in 1849, believe it or not. It's been a train here since 1849, and that continued until 1969. So during the 1960s, a guy called Beechin was given a job because there was train stations all over Britain interconnecting with each other, obviously. But obviously, as the motor cars were developing, they, um, they commissioned this guy called Beechins to produce a report on whether or not the train station should all be closed down and stay open. And he recommended that hundreds of train stations across Britain were closed down. It's one of the worst things they ever did in Britain. And it turned out the guy Beechin you know, turns out he was um, corrupt. He recommended all the train stations to get built down, uh, knocked down, open, shut down, and motorways built instead. And guess what? Turns out he has contracts and all the companies getting the roadworks, the contracts to build the roads. So it was corruption. Corruption led to the, all the train stations getting taken down. Typical, isn't it? So this is the Highlander from New York. It's a miserable day here. I'm in Gala Shields, which is about 37 miles from Edinburgh. Population is only about 13,000. It's been a borough since 1599, but there have been people here for thousands of years, as you can imagine, all over Scotland. Um, textile is the main, was the main industry down this way, and it still has a um, Heriot Watt University Textile and Design um, College down here, university down here. Uh, so there's not much here. It's a... Uh, Pretty much, um, although I was quite excited about coming here, I don't know if this stat is still true, okay, but um, historically, Gala Shields was always known for having more ladies than gentlemen. So you had, if you were a gentleman, you had more chance of getting a girlfriend down here. So it could be my lucky day, everyone. Um, I know there is more females than males in the world anyway. I think there's 51% females to 49% male, but I think down here it was slightly higher. So you never know, ladies, by the end of the day, I could have bagged myself a Gala Shields girl. <laughs> it's known locally as Gala, actually. Um, this is the Market Square. This is um, a statue here called Man with a Sheep. Can you notice? <laughs> uh, look, this is called Man with a Sheep. And it was presented to the borough of Gala Shields by Mr... Christopher Scott of Gala, in 1971. It took him a little bit, a bit of time to work out the sheep, because you can see the man. <laughs> the man's head's in the middle, and the sheep's on the right-hand side. It's like the man's head is inside the sheep's body. It's quite a strange James um, sculptor, isn't it? Man with sheep. <laughs> you remember hearing that? There were lots of guys moving from Gala to Glasgow. Is that right? I don't know if it's still the same now. As I say, ah, oh, look, so you can see up there. <laughs> so on the, they've heavily marketed this market square. They've got a lamppost <laughs> with market square on it that you can hardly see. I just noticed it. <laughs> um, and this is this, yeah, this is a market square which is very famous. Uh, do we have any Marillion fans? You know the soft rock Scottish band Marillion. Um, this lead singer is a guy called Fish who actually supports my team, Hibernian. My soccer team is Hibernian. And Fish of Marillion is actually a big Hibernian supporter as well. And he wrote his famous song, Kaylee. Kaylee. And it wasn't a girl's name. It was two girls' names put together, Kay and Lee. And he wrote about, Do you remember the cherry blossoms in the market square? Do you remember? So this is where it was. And the square was redeveloped in 2015. Uh, tw no, 20, 20, I've just forgotten the date. Anyway, redeveloped. <laughs> and uh, guess who opened the square? Marillion! And here they've written the words on the stone here. Do you remember 
Cherry blossoms in the market square. Do you remember? I thought it was confetti in your hair. Kelly by Marillion. And yeah, so now I was living in Spain in 2006 and I met a girl called Kelly. That was her name. Her name is Kelly, spelt as in Kelly together. So he put two different girls' names together, but now Kelly is actually a very popular name for girls. <laughs> so as well as fish right in our number, I think it was number one it went to. I can't remember, don't quote me on that. But um, it was a very, I think it was the most successful song, shall we say. And he um, also um, is known now for creating a girl's name. Oh, by the way, sorry, I need to go back. I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot to show you. There's not much here, by the way, to show you. <laughs> yeah, there's not much here. But what there is, I just forgot. <laughs> I wonder if you'll hear a siren. You know the song? Ali, bali, ali, bali, be Sitting on your mammy's knee Scottish people will know that song. Maybe you get a little in the sweetie. Look, like, oh! Like, maybe you get a wee girl eating a wee sweetie. And the wee boy want to buy a sweetie, look. And this is Coulter's candy. The wee boy. And this is Coulter. Coulter's candy. This is who the song was written for. Try to hide that bin. There's a red bin behind them in the background. I'm trying to hide the bin so we get the best shot. <laughs> so look, this is a famous Scottish nursery rhyme, I think it was called. Look, Coulter's Candy. Ali Bali, Ali Bali be sitting on your mammy's knee, greeting for a wee Bobby to buy some Coulter's Candy. And similarly, he was a woolen weaver, weaver who turned uh, into a confectioner. He was born in Galloway and moved to Galashiels as a young man. And he sold his boiled sweeties around the town and round about different border towns. You've got, got Kelso, Selkirk, Jedburgh, Melrose is all round about here as well. And he lived with his wife and children in different places in the town. And he was a very flamboyant and colourful character according to this sign here. He dressed in a variety of colourful clothes and he sang a song to help advertise his wares now known as Coulter's Candy. It is a much-loved children's song and lullaby that has been passed on through the generations. The statue was created by a local sculptress called Angela Hunter to recognise the fact that Ali Bali is Fregidol Gala from good old Gala Shields. And the statue was delivered by the Borders Council in partnership with local community, historians and councillors who were keen to celebrate the special connections between Robert Coulter and Gala Shields. The Great Tapestry is also here, as I mentioned a little while ago, but they won't let me down to do a virtual tour. So there's Coulter's Candy. I didn't know that until I saw this today. Um, to be honest, I did not know that until I, I arrived about half an hour before the tour started and it was torrential rain. Um, I'm soaked to the skin, but I think the rain might have actually stopped now. Um, actually, so we've got a cinema over here in the pavilion. I think it might have a bingo hall there as well. There seems to be quite a lot of an abundance of restaurants here actually. There seems to be hundreds of restaurants. So that's good if you like a choice of food. I'm just going to see, hopefully the rain stopped actually. Nice Indian tandoori restaurant there. Yeah, there's a street further behind me called Island Street. It's called Island Street. And I've no idea why it's called Island Street. I'm just going to have a look at the price of the properties here. So there you go, look at that place of that house. So this is um, a four bedroom, three rooms, three public rooms, three bathrooms, £419,000. So it's quite a big house. But here's a better one. So there's one there. One public room, two bedroom, one bathroom, offers over £170,000. So you can see the difference. That's in the ward or... Selkirk. Here's a little house in Selkirk for £60,000. One bedroom, one bathroom. sixty grand. That's not bad. Selkirk's another little um, border town as well. So you see the difference in styles of houses as well. And there's one there. That's not bad. Look at that. 145000 Two bedroom. Looks not too bad. 
A nice old stone cottage there, 220,000. Four bedroom, stone cottage, 220,000. <whistles> Not bad, eh? Yeah, it seems to be quite a few bakers as well. Greg's is just a national chain of bakers. Pretty cheap food. Cheap and cheerful is what we would call it. It's got a big retail park as well, with all the big supermarkets, Aldi's, Lidl's and all this usual stuff, you know. Um, I'm just going to get over here. Hello Cheryl! How's it going? Are you still on holiday? Are you still on, was it Bogner Regis you went to? Oh here's Gino's Ginatella, that gelateria, that looks quite good. You do pistachio? Oh, they do pistachio! Oh, I could be coming back there if they want. Pistachio, ice cream. Sounds good to me. I do like a pistachio. Ice cream. I remember the first time I seen it in Spain, I was like, ah, pistachio ice cream. I thought that's quite a strange combination. But it's actually, um, I'm not really an, an ice cream person, to be fair. Um, but I do, if I see a place that's got pistachio, I'll take a pistachio ice cream, you know. I'm just going to cross the road here. Uh, yeah, there isn't much to see, to be honest. I used to come down here. I used to do the maintenance for the Bank of Scotland. I was a mobile engineer for the Bank of Scotland. I used to come down here for the banks. I came down here for a football game, a soccer game once. There's the Reavers statue. Have you heard of the Border Reavers? They were like kind of like bandits, cattle thieves and horse thieves. Kind of like, you know, you've all heard of Rob Roy McGregor, yeah? Well, the Reavers were a border bandits. And uh, this is what this represents, the Reavers. R-E-I-V-R-S. Reavers. They were basically bandits, robbers. But, um, back from border Saturday, then off to my daughter's house. Oh, nice St Anne's, oh, near Blackpool. That's nice. I've been to St Anne's before, it's quite nice there. One second, everyone, I'm just going to put this down for a second. I think it's stopped raining now. One second, everyone, excuse me. I think it's stopped raining, I can take my umbrella off. Yeah, one second, everyone, I'm just going to put my umbrella away. Hopefully that's the last of the rain. But I won't be holding my breath, that's for sure. Um, yeah, the, but the difference with the, the Reavers, the bandits from the border area, right? They were both Scottish and English. You know how historically the Scottish and English would be fighting each other? Um, well, the Reavers were kind of different because they were a mixture of English and Scottish on the same side. Because obviously we're down in, near the borders of England. This is where they are, we're in the Scottish borders. Which means it's closer to England, of course. Um, so, yeah, the Reavers were, they didn't pledge a lot, uh, a lot uh, allegiance to either England or Scotland, they were mixed. Which was quite unusual, obviously. Let's try to cross the road here. I just noticed this on the way up as well. Obviously, Robert Burns is our most famous author and um, poet. He's a national poet, a national bard. He's the third most statued person in the world, behind Christopher Columbus and Queen Victoria. And here he is here. He actually wrote a couple of songs down here, based on um, Gala Shields. I can't remember their names, I've just forgotten. But yeah, two of his songs or poems were written down here, about here. So there he is, the man himself, the bard. Bit of a cad, obviously. Abraham Lincoln was obviously a big supporter and fan of Robert Burns. And Abraham Lincoln used to woo his girlfriend with um, Burns' poems. He carried Burns' poems about with him. In a book. These are the Borough Chambers. It's like the sort of like um, the town hall. Part of it dates back to 1887, but I think it was rebuilt in 1925. Obviously you've got the war. You've got the war memorials here as well. Everywhere in Scotland you go, you look at all the... It's always got a war memorial. See here? See the light up there? Watch well. Watch wheel. Ah, you see the... The motto, that's the motto of the town, the Sur Plumes. Have you heard of Sur Plumes? They're basically a sweetie in Scotland, a boiled sweetie called a Sur Plume. 
in English it would be a sour plum. Uh, actually, so that's uh, the motto. You can't, I'll maybe see if I can see it somewhere else. That's it up there. But um, it's actually supposed to, that these are the, the motto, sour plums, sour plums. It dates back to, uh, allegedly, to an incident in uh, 1337, where English soldiers were, were found picking wild plums in the area. And of course, they were caught by the Scots, who slaughtered them all instantly. <laughs> so the flag is uh, the fox with the, the plums on it. The sewer plums, the sewer plums. And look at this, I was just reading this earlier. So this was opened in 1924, unveiled in 1925 by the Field Marshal L. Haig. You know the poppies? The L. Haig poppies? So he survived the war, World War One. He condemned this gentleman here. I'll call him a gentleman, he would be classed as a war criminal, L. Haig. Um, he sent hundreds of thousands of men to their death. You know when you've seen Blackadder? And they all get um, sent over the trenches. That was that man there. He sent them over the trenches to die, knowing they would get slaughtered. Hundreds of thousands of men were condemned to an early death because of that man there. I don't buy a poppy because of it. Look at all these men here. This is just from one little town. 1914, so this is the First World War. Look at all the men that died. He survived. El Haig survived. Yeah. All these poor men here didn't survive. I've actually jumped on his grave. <laughs> He's buried next to Robert, Gre uh, Robert the Bruce's heart in Melrose Abbey. <laughs> yeah, my granddad fought in World War One, but he survived. He got injuries. He suffered from injuries. He was injured in World War One. He died of as a consequence of his injuries. Actually, my granddad. He lived, he lived for ten years, but guess what? He did in that ten-year period. <laughs> He had ten children. He was a busy man. <laughs> yeah, ten, one, one died actually. My dad would not have been born. I might not be here. Because um, they had nine children, right? And one of them died. So they had another kid. Which was my dad. My dad was the, my dad was the last of ten. But nine died. Eh, one died, sorry. So I never saw my granddad. This used to be a dam here. There used to be a mill here, actually. The water, the river's quite high. So this, um, so you see here, there used to be a mill here, look. So where that fountain is now, your great granddad went missing at Flanders, didn't he? Yeah, I've got one of my granddad's medals from the war. There used to be a corn mill here. And they barricaded the dam in 1912 and got taken away. And this is supposed to be a fountain here, with a fish on it. Oh, little school kids here, I wonder what they're going away from. As I say, I only used to come down here for the, because I worked in the banks, so the water's quite strong today. Whee! At least the rain stopped everyone. I didn't think the rain was going to stop. I got soaked to the skin. Oh, by the way, nothing to do with Gala, but you know what's uh, National Cheese Day today in the UK? National Cheese Day? <laughs> I'm going to give you a yes or no question. Is this true? Aye or no? Aye or no? Mozzarella is the second most popular cheese in Britain. <laughs> yes or no? Is mozzarella the second most popular cheese in Britain? <coughs> Excuse me. Aye. Don says aye. Is this another statue, Robert? Oh, this will be Walter Scott, is it? Walter Scott was obviously born near eh, Sir Walter Scott. I'm assuming that's who this is. Is it? The the East. Oh, it's Robert Burns again. Oh, that's quite bizarre. Eh? Two two monuments to Robert Burns in the one place, just across from each other. Oh, great and gallant Scott, the the last of all the bards. 
Wash shoe sun. I don't know what that says, man. Hey, that's quite unusual, but I have two statues. Close, no. Because that's quite close, I look. So there's one there of Robert Burns. I'm not sure of the significance with the hat guy underneath it, like, but anyway. Yeah, the so there are statues just over there. Quite unusual to see two monuments to Robert Burns so close to each other. Maybe there was rival Burns clubs. What's this? This is the local bathrooms, are they? wonder if they're shut down or you have to pay. A lot of the public restrooms closed during COVID, didn't they? Remember that? So this is kind of like a little park here. There is a little trail you can do. So Walter Scott, obviously our national author, was um, born close to here. Dryborough. Obviously he moved to Edinburgh, but he's still got a house through here. Maybe I. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's I. Nice old street lamp here, look. So again, you've got the fox and the sewer plumes, is it? The, the, on the lamp post. Nice old lamp, that looks quite. I'm not sure how old it is, but it looks quite old. It's probably just made to look old, isn't it? Maybe. Can't see what it says on the lamp up there. Well, what's all the birds? Wonder what's happened. Make all the birds fly away. Oh, the bells! <laughs> the bells! <laughs> Yeah, so apologies again, everyone, for uh, messing up the start of the tour. As I said, I pressed portrait instead of landscape. I pressed the button when it was in portrait mode. And um, I don't know how you, I, I don't think you can change it. So when you turn the phone, then it just tell, once you turn the phone back into landscape, it just tells you to put it back. So it's quite annoying. Yeah, so the train, the train opened back up in 2015. The train line closed in 1969 because of the beach ins, dude. And then um, opened back up in 2015. It goes from Edinburgh to a place called Tweedbank. Gala Seals is kind of like the second last stop on the train. It costs around about £10. Takes about 56 minutes on the train. Um, it was The train was quite quiet, but the train was empty, right? So we're coming down, there's me and another guy, we're, we're down here for Invisible Cities training session with some YouTube guy or something like that, and um, the whole train's empty, and this loudest bunch of Americans got on and sat right beside us, talking at the top of their voices. The whole train's empty! And about eight people, all speaking really loudly, got on and sat on the train right beside us, and I'm like, the whole train's empty! <laughs> Why did you choose to sit here? <laughs> so we had to move because we're so loud. <laughs> but I remember that happened to me during COVID as well. We were having to wear masks on the bus. I've got on a big double decker bus right up the stairs. The whole bus is empty, and this idiot gets on the bus and sits behind, right behind me, and starts coughing. And of course, he's not wearing the mask, and I'm wearing the mask. I'm like, buddy, I says to him, I says, why are you? <laughs> Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, did I swear again? No, apologies if you heard me swearing. I'll need to delete that video. It's because you press the wrong button and it doesn't give you a chance to take it back. It's so frustrating. You're like, ah! <laughs> In these situations, you've just got to laugh. Well, swear and then laugh, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Like, but anyway, what can you do, you know? We're all adjusting. Yeah. But yeah, so I had to move on the bus with this guy. Then the whole bus is empty. He sits beside me, he starts coughing. And of course the vaccines were not out there, you know, I've got asthma. I didn't want to catch COVID before the vaccines came out, you know what I mean? Um, by the way, the answer to the question about cheese is no. The most popular cheese in Britain is Brie. And the second most popular is... I do not believe this actually, but allegedly the second most popular cheese in Britain is Red Leicester Cheddar. Red Leicester Cheddar is the second most popular in B. I I mean, how is, I thought mozzarella would have been high up there. You know? You know all the pizzas that get served. You know what I mean? But anyway. So this is pretty much it, by the way. Actually, in the town centre, I said there's not. 
they've got the great text, Scotland's great tapestry here. Ah, let's see here, you maybe get a better look at it here. Look, sewer plums. So you see the fox and the plums. Sewer plums, it means. Sewer, sewer plums. If you Google sewer plums, it'll probably be a hard boiled green sweetie. But it means sewer plums. And as I mentioned earlier, it dates back to an incident where the English were caught in 1337 gathering plums. And the Scots wiped them all out. So nice little park here for sitting outside in the summer. Not a very nice day today, of course. It's been pretty miserable, horrible weather. Unfortunately, all the way through this morning. But when I checked the, the weather forecast last night, I did see the rain was going to stop here at 11 o'clock. So look here, let's try to see what this says. So this is the Round Tree Bridge. The pillars were restored in 2000 to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Gala Shields coming together as a barony in 1599. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. The modern Gala Shields became a borough in 1599. So it's got a swimming pool as well. In fact, I remember going to the swimming pool. Red Leicester. Yeah, Red Leicester's alright, but I would just say it's quite specific, isn't it? you think it would just be Cheddar. <laughs> rather than Red Leicester. Um, so the reason I'm down here is because of Invisible Cities. Obviously, I've been trying to develop and build up my YouTube channel, which I've kind of been neglecting. neglecting. And Zach here from Invisible Cities asked me if I wanted to come down. They've got some YouTube guy. Um, in fact, you might want to watch him on YouTube. I'll send a link to some of his stuff. It's all in the borders. And the thing is, with the, in regards to the borders, right, is um, when I think about the borders in Scottish history, you tend to think of more places on the East Coast, like Haddington, the Siege of Haddington, um, the Siege of Dunbar, where well, there was more than one Siege of Dunbar, of course. Look at the little train set here. Um, choo -choo. And yes, yeah, so you, don't, you don't really think about the history between in this kind of area. Um, but obviously, there was witch trials. There was witch trials down here as well. Smokey Joe. Why is the thing at the back? Remember, I got my now there's stuff for rent. Seven hundred and fifty pound a month for a little cottage in Melrose, three bedrooms, three toilets. Seven fifty a month. That's quite good. That'd cost you about probably two thousand pound in Edinburgh. So the, obviously the sh the prices of the properties are a bit cheaper down here. But now you've got the tr the transport links with the train to Edinburgh. You know, fifty minutes. 55 minutes on the train, directly into Edinburgh. You can even go for a night out, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so as now they've reopened the train station up, it is a lot um, better. I mean, I, I don't think I could stay down here, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think I could live here. So, music station. Any Paul Weller fans? There's Paul Weller, Oasis, Liam Gallagher. Elton John, look at Elton John, old Human League album, Rubber Soul, Pet Shop Boys, oh look at the David Bowie mug, pretty cool, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I think the guy here must have been a mod, quite a couple of, there's quite a few bits of mod stuff in here, I wonder if the guy was a mod, quite a bit of rock as well, right enough, but. Yeah, a lot of the shops seem to be closed today as well. Um, but yes, we've got Invisible Cities are trying to launch down here. Um, in Gala Shields. But we've only got one trainee tour guide that's managed to... Come on, oh, God, I'll tell you what, for a small dead town, there are loads of cars. Obviously because it's raining, everyone's coming out in their cars today. So the roads are quite busy with traffic. Um, yeah, so um, Zach here from Invisible Cities is trying to launch down here. But the thing is, there's not much to see. Um, so basically, that was that one street I've just walked along. You like the jam? Oh yeah, I like the jam myself. That's why I was a mod. So basically, this street here, this is why I used to come down here to go to the Bank of Scotland. I used to do the maintenance for the Bank of Scotland for six years. So obviously the textile industry is quite... They actually do a lot of Harris Tweed. You know the... 
the the one of the processes for the Harris Tweed and ta uh, for kilt making, sorry, not for Harris Tweed, for kilt kilts are um, a lot of the kilt shops have got like factories down here as well. So a lot of years a yarn shop, Barbeta for it, look, untangled yarn. So obviously textile is still a big industry down here. As I said, you've got the Heriot Watt Textile and Desi Design University down here. That's an Edinburgh University, Heriot Watt, but the textile and design um, places down here. So, obviously you get your yarn from there. The Americans and the knitters and the crafters are like this. Nice jumper there. So, a lot of the, like the shops seem to be closed. I'll tell you what I've noticed as well, there seems to be loads of barbers. Loads of barbers. Um, and I, I need my hair cut, so that's quite handy. I might have time to get a quick hair cut. So, basically I started the tour. at the Market Square and I just walked along that street round the corner and this takes you back to the Market Square <laughs> so it's not really the type of place you would come for I mean you would come just if you were passing through and you're on your way to like um, some of the other more popular places in the borders you know Kelso's got a nice, nice little bit Selkirk you've got Mel Melrose Abbey Jedburgh, um, and so on. So, but yeah, there's not actually much to see here. They got the, they have the, the riding is very popular here. Different places in the borders have different. Um, it's different, like like horses. In fact, there's a nod to it there. See, yeah, the horse riding is very popular down here. The ridings they call it. Yeah, different parts of the village. There was a great Polish club. What's that? There used to be a nightclub here, I'm sure, years ago. Because because we had heard that there was more females than men here. Like, you know, every so often people would organise a bus to come down from Edinburgh and go to the club down here, try and get into the local girls. <laughs> so the bus station and the train station is just up there, the interchange. That's where the train station was today. Yeah, the riding weekend is you get, um, in fact I forgot to show you the great tapestry place, Bulldog Bakery. Um, oh, you've got your charity shop, your thrift shops as you call them, charity shops, Bernados, vapes. Yeah, so that's me back where I started the tour from, you know, so there's not actually that much to see and do here. So to be honest, I wouldn't really bother coming. <laughs> uh, sorry not to build it up a little bit, but as you can see, there's not much here. You could, maybe if you're on your way to somewhere, it's a good place to come for shops or something. You'll get lunch, have a little wander about for an hour or so, but I wouldn't say you're going to spend much time here, shall we say. What's this shop here? So we've got Tweed, Tartan Tweed. Um, Oh, look at this Highland cow. Is that a Highland cow cushion? What's this? Or a blanket? I like my Highland cow. Oh, I like a Highland. Oh, it's an umbrella. Look, everyone. A Highland cow umbrella. <laughs> That's pretty cool, eh? A Highland cow umbrella. And the wee tartan dog. The wee Scotty dog. Ball bags. That's a brand of Scottish um, underwear. Ball bags, that's a Scottish way of pronouncing ball bags. Ball bags. So why are you holding that with that? Oh, I'm doing a live tour, my dear. I'm streaming live to people from around the world. Why are you doing that? Because it makes it more professional when you move the phone. So if you were just holding the phone, it would be shaking about and moving up and down. And people would feel sick, but this allows you to control it. So it gives it some more professional. It's called a gimbal. It's brainwashed by technology, aren't it? Yes. Oh, you need it. Chuck it in the river. It cost. It cost. It cost one hundred and eighty pounds. I'm not going to chuck it in the river. I <laughs> know. Oh, you've got to watch out for the microwaves. Jesus, God, man. <laughs> I tracked the ball. <laughs> chuck it in the river. She sees me. She says, "Why am I walking about with this gimbal thing?" Well, she didn't know it was a gimbal right enough, but yeah. And then she started going on about microwaves. That's <laughs> 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 so funny. Um, I thought she was going to get quite aggressive with me there. 
start threatening me with violence. <laughs> um, so that's me back at the start of the tour. So what's that? <laughs> Not much to see or do here. Um, as I say, I don't know if you'd come, maybe come for lunch and there is loads of restaurants and bars and cafes and all that, so you maybe come here for lunch, you know what I mean? And a little wander about the town, but um be nicer and nicer weather, I suppose. And these are the cherry blossom trees. <laughs> so there's four cherry blossom trees, but should cherry blossom trees not be in, in bloom just now? No, because these are the cherry blossom trees, but I thought cherry blossom should be in flower just now, no? Am I mistaken, everyone? I thought they would be. I thought they would be in flower just now, so that's um, pretty much Gala Shields for you, everyone. As I said, the only reason I came down here was to do a, I'm doing a training session. So what I'll do is after, um, once I get back home, I'll send a link to the guy's YouTube channel. And if you want this, it's all in the borders, Selkirk, people's area. Obviously they had witch trials down here as well. Um, so there is some history, in, but it tends to be like out, out of the town centre and so on, you know what I mean? Um, and as you can see, there's not much in the market. There's not a market on. I'm not sure if there is a market at the weekends, possibly. You may get a few stalls at the weekend here. The bells going off. The bells, the bells, the microwaves. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, as I say, maybe come for lunch here if you're passing through the area. Um, I forgot to show you the great tapestry place. I'll just walk back along here. Okay, because I, for I forgot to show you where the great tapestry place is. I'm trying to avoid the scary locals. <laughs> oh, the joys of life, you know. It's like in Edinburgh. You never know who you're going to meet in Edinburgh on a tour. I thought I'd be quite safe down here. <laughs> ah, she's a harmless lady, you know. Obviously, she's got things in her head about technology and microwaves and and um, all that kind of stuff, you know, so. <laughs> Pet rescues, most charity shops. Yeah, it's pretty quiet for people walking about, isn't there? There isn't a lot of people walking about. Um, am I doing two? Yeah, this is my only job, Mark. Um, this is my only job. I have no other income. I've had no other income since November. I had to save up my money to survive the winter, you know, so if anybody does want to make a tip or sponsor me, you can do so. Buy me a coffee or PayPal. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a train spot on tour tomorrow, or a leaf tour tomorrow, I can't remember. I've got an in-person tour on tomorrow. Um, I've got a couple of private tours booked. I've got three private tours booked up for uh, one week in April, so that's quite handy. You make quite good money doing... Uh, the private tours, you know. So I've got three in the in th three days in April. I've got a, each day. I've got two half day tours and one full day tour. So I need to get more private tours. They're the ones you make good money from. And I've got some coach work for the cruise liners as well. Obviously, there's Edinburgh's got a couple of different cruise liner terminals where the cruises come in. So. Uh, I've got some work on the coaches as well, so that's that'll keep me ticking over. But yeah, I need to start getting more work and more income because my funds are going low, shall we say. So yeah, I need to get my finger at my butt and get more work. But yeah, it's not very many people walking about. But I see I quite like it down here. I did like to when you come from Edinburgh, any chance you got to escape Edinburgh was was great, like, you know. So I did used to like coming down here. Oh, right, oyster catchers, I can hear. You had oyster catchers, the high-pitched one. So this is the great tapestry here. The ones that won't let me inside to do a tour. I wonder if they let me do a pre-recorded tour. Yeah, because Invisible Cities are trying to launch down here, but we've only got one trainee tour guide. Um, but it's got quite a big high problem with youth um, homelessness down here. So I'm surprised we haven't got um, more um, 
youngsters coming to be our virtual tour, uh, to be our tour guide, you know. You don't want to be homeless again. You could have a whole Zoom call with suggested options. I know the, the thing is, Mark, you, you need to, it's hard to get people to um, to donate and stuff like that. I mean, I'm appreciative for every, every tip and donation that comes in, but it's just not enough, you know. I have to do other work to subsidise this kind of income, you know. So that's the sun coming out, look. The sun's coming out, woohoo! The sun has got his hat on. Hip, 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 hooray! The sun has got his hat on and is coming out to play. That's three songs I've sang today as well, by the way. <laughs> Could I be a board member for the Invisible Cities? Well, I do some work for them. I still do some work for the Invisible Cities. Um, I would actually like to do some more kind of training with them, you know. Um, I might get some more work with them as well. Let's see what happens going forward, eh? But I'm going to finish off here, everyone. You've seen everything that Gala Shields has got to offer. I've got to go and get some lunch before the training session starts at one o'clock. So thank you very much for coming with me today. Apologies for messing up the start of the tour yet again. Apologies if you heard any bad swear words. I will need to go back onto my YouTube channel and delete that one. <laughs> Although sometimes your swearing videos become your most popular ones. It's quite strange. <laughs> Could you do freelance as a tour advisor? Well, you know, Mikey O'Rourke used to do the tours on Hago, he's giving me some work. He's going to put my tours on his website for him for me. He's going to become an agent. He's going to sell my tours on a Mikey's, because Mikey's a blue badge tour guide and he gets lots and lots of work. His website's a big expensive um, website. He's a partner for various tour companies as well. So he's going to start selling my tours on his website. So that'll be good. I'll maybe, I should survive this year. You know, if I have to go back on benefits in the winter, I'll just go back on benefits, you know, I'll just go back on the welfare or the dole. Um, so I'm not bothered about that, like, but, yeah, let's see what happens, eh? So thank you very much, everyone, for coming on my tour. If I never say too hello to you, I apologise. Hello to everyone who turned up, and thank you very much for coming on my tour. Have a great day, or a great evening, what's left of it, whatever time zone you are in. And I'm going to go and get some lunch, so thank you very much, everyone. And apologies for messing up the link yet again. <laughs> I will try not make that same mistake another time. But I can't promise anything because I'm a bit of a twat. <laughs>